Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to talk about the moment of a couple. Well, first of all, we need to understand what a moment is. We also need to understand what a couple is. A couple refers to two forces that are equal in magnitude and directed in opposite directions. Now, they can be situated in any possible way, but the two forces, regardless of what direction they're pointing to, will always form a plane. So you can always form a plane between two forces that have the same magnitude and an opposite direction. So it doesn't matter, let's take two pens, doesn't matter if the forces are like this, it could be in any direction, as long as they're in opposite directions, equal in magnitude, there will be a plane between the two forces. Perpendicular to that plane will have a moment caused by those two forces. A moment is basically a torque, the concept is the same. Now, if the forces are acting on a physical object, for example, if this um, this area here that's defined by this dotted line is like a physical object, like a plate or a piece of uh, plywood board or something like that, and we apply two forces like this, it will cause a torque to exist that will tend to turn the object around in a circular motion. And so moments tend to have a direction and tend to have either a clockwise or counterclockwise motion associated with it if, there was, if the force was actually acting on an object. Now also notice that the two forces that are opposite in direction, equally magnitude, have a certain distance between them, we call that distance d. And then we can say that the moment can be defined, the moment can be defined as being the product, the vector product of the position vector from the start of one vector to the start of the other vector representing the two forces. So if we start at the negative vector, it doesn't really matter, but because of the sign arrangement here, let's start at the negative vector. We have a vector going from the point of the start or of this negative force to the start of the positive force. We call that the R vector position vector. If we then multiply that vector times the magnitude of the force, that will then be the definition of the moment. Now notice, if you use your right hand rule, point your fingers in the direction of the position vector, then curl your fingers in the direction of the force, you can see that the moment then points upward. This moment then here would be perpendicular to the plane formed by the two forces forming the couple. Now, if we take this angle right here, theta, and you can see that this is the opposite side to the angle, this is the hypotenuse to the angle, if this is the adjacent side right here, we can then say that the magnitude d is equal to the magnitude of the position vector times the sine of theta. From that, we can then also say that the magnitude of the moment is equal to the magnitude of r cross f. The magnitude of this would be equal to the magnitude of r times the magnitude of f times the sine of the angle between them. Now notice that r times the sine of theta is equal to distance between the two forces. Now when we say the distance between two forces, it's the distance along the line that, that is perpendicular to the two forces. So therefore we can say that this is equal to d times f. So the magnitude of the moment, let me just make sure I talk about the magnitude of the moment, is simply equal to the distance between the two forces times the magnitude of one of the forces. Now since it's the magnitude, we don't really care if we call the magnitude of this force or that force. Now, the negative simply represents the direction. This simply represents that's the opposite direction to this. Notice that the magnitude of both forces really are the same, it's just that the directions are different. All right, now notice what, if, what happens if we move the two forces along the line of action. So here you can see that the forces are at opposite of a diagonal here, but what if I move the force in such a way that the position vector falls right along the perpendicular distance between the two forces. It turns out that the moment is still r cross f, but now you see that the magnitude of r is equal to the magnitude of the distance, and that's because the angle now here is 90 degrees. So again, if we take the moment, take the magnitude of it, this is equal to the magnitude of r cross f, in this particular case I would be equal to r times the sine of theta, or actually better off saying r times f times the sine of theta, but in this particular case the sine of theta is 90 degrees, or theta is 90 degrees, so we say this is equal to r times f times the sine of 90 degrees, and of course the sine of 90 degrees is 1, so this is simply r times f, which is still equal to d times f. 
So if R falls on the perpendicular line between the two forces, between the two lines of action of the forces, then you can see that it's simply, again, the distance times the force, which is the magnitude of the moment. Now, what happens if I change the direction of these forces? What if I have my force acting this way and this force acting that way? Again, using the right-hand rule, you can see that, that only the direction of the moment changes. Instead of sticking perpendicular up this way, it'll be perpendicular in the opposite direction down below the plane that is formed by the two forces. One more thing about the moment. It turns out if you, for example, this is probably a good place to go to. If you go along the line here, now we drew the moment right here at the halfway point between where the two forces are acting. But what if I want to find the moment here or here or here or here? Well, it turns out it doesn't really matter where you calculate the moment. There isn't really any sense in saying that the moment starts at a, per, a certain position, although you can calculate the moment relative to a certain position. But if I want to know what the moment is over here, or the moment is over there, or the moment is over there, it turns out it will be exactly the same magnitude in exactly the same direction. Just to kind of get a feel for the relation between the moment and the torque, let's say that this is a solid piece of wood, and let's say we want to find the torque about this point right there. And so this distance right here would be d divided by 4. This is right here would be uh, 3d divided by 4. Uh, let me write that a little bit better. So 3d divided by 4. So you see that the moment harm is 3 quarters this distance. Here it's only 1 quarter distance. Notice that when you add up the torques, they will still add up to r cross f or d times f in this case. So let's try that. So let's say that here, the, the, por the torque or the portion of the moment caused by this force would be the force times this distance. So what we do then is we have the force times d over 4, and then we add that, oops, we add that to the force or the torque caused by this one, so it's the force times this moment arm, which is 3d over 4, and so when you add that together, so since this is d over 4, this is 3d over 4, we get this is equal to the force times 4d over 4, which is equal to force times distance. So you can see that it doesn't matter what point you pick to, to calculate the moment to. You can pick it here, pick it in the middle, pick it over here, it doesn't matter. You get, always get the exact same result. So the moment anywhere along the line, connecting the two forces, you always get the same moment. And that holds true for here as well. You can calculate the moment anywhere along this position vector right here, and you'll get the exact same result, irregardless what point you pick. And that's an important thing to remember when we start calculating moments of different kind of situations, different kind of uh, physical situations where we have moments coming in from all different directions, or force coming in from all different directions in pairs, in couples, and then you see that calculating the moment well, really doesn't matter where along the line of action or where along that the forces are or where along the line connecting the two forces you calculate the moment. So that's what we mean by the moment of a couple. And so now you know some of the principles of it. Now we'll look at it. Now we'll go look at it in a little bit more detail in the following videos to come. And that's how we do that.